JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, man in custody after a gun battle with police in Riverton City. A man who allegedly engaged the police in a gun battle near the Riverton City landfill on Wednesday has been taken into custody. An illegal firearm was reportedly seized following the incident. About 3 p.m., the police responded to reports of a robbery. The cops were reportedly confronted by armed men, and this led to a gun battle at the swamp near the landfill. The suspect was later captured. 22-year-old man killed in Manchester. The Manchester police are probing the murder of a 22-year-old man who was killed by a gunman in Bottom Albion on Wednesday night. He has been identified as Shivoni Stevens, otherwise called Strappy, a construction worker. Police say about 11.10 p.m. residents heard loud explosions and called the cops. On the arrival, Stevens was seen lying on a roadway suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He was rushed to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. St. James sees 222% increase in murders. The murderous rampage in St. James since the start of the year has outpaced corresponding 2020 figures by 222% with disputes between families and friends proving deadlier than gang feuds. Between January 1 and February 24, St. James recorded 29 homicides, compared to 9 for the corresponding period last year, making it the police division with the highest percentage increase in murders. Kingston Central with a 78% increase, moving from 9 last year to 16 for the period this year, and St. Thomas moving from 3 to 5 murders follow next. In terms of homicide victims, St. James also emerges as the deadliest police division, with St. Andrew South falling behind with 28 deaths. We are seeing a growing number of domestic murders, where family members and friends are resorting to violence to settle their differences. Superintendent Vernon Ellis, the commanding officer for St. James, said in assessing the situation. He noted that gang killings had seen a spike at the start of the year, but has quietened down somewhat with the arrest of some key suspects and the seizure of numerous illegal firearms. Ellis, however, expressed concern about the proliferation of guns in some communities that were not usually on the police's radar, rural communities like Springmount, Maroon Town and Cambridge, despite last year's seizure of 116 firearms being the highest by the division in a single year. Despite the bloody picture, Ellis said that the 29 murders over two months is an improvement on recent years when the Northwestern Parish was seeing 30 killings monthly. While we see every murder as one murder too much, we have seen worse days, said Ellis, who took command of St. James on the back of a record 342 murders in 2017. He noted the seizure of 30 legal firearms, arrest of three of the parish's most wanted men, and the use of DNA to reopen a number of cold cases as successes since the start of the year. He suggested that a new multi-agency crime-fighting strategy would reap further fruit. The multi-agency approach will take us to the root of policing. It will cover infractions at every level, traffic breaches, money laundering, drug smuggling, lottery scamming, stealing water, stealing electricity, illegal vending, squatting and breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Act. We are looking at taking a zero-tolerance approach to crime across the board, said Ellis. Some stakeholders in the parish, including Ellis and St. James Northwestern Member of Parliament, Dr. Horace Chang, have supported the idea of a new state of emergency, SOE, to be imposed on the parish since the spike in killings after the last such measure came to an end last year. The government is now appealing a 2020 Supreme Court ruling that the detention of five men under the SOEs was unconstitutional. On Tuesday, Chang, who is also the National Security Minister, said that the government would not declare another SOE until the appeal had been heard. On a national level, murders are up by 13%, with 221 homicides up to February 24, as opposed to 208 for the same period last year. Sentencing postponed for relatives in murder of Tamara Geddes. The sentencing of the three family members who pleaded guilty in relation to the contract killing of Tamara Geddes at her house in Trelawney has been pushed back to next week, Tuesday. The hearing was set for today in the Trelawney Circuit Court, but it had to be postponed. The deceased woman's sister, 39-year-old Nadine Geddes, and her daughters, 22-year-old Shanice Ruddock, and her 16-year-old sister, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder on February 8. The police had reported that about 8.30 p.m. on June 19, 2020, 
Tamara Geddes and her 10-year-old daughter at home when a masked gunman forced his way inside the house and held them up. The gunman demanded money and proceeded to rob Geddes of $16,000 in cash and her two cell phones. He then demanded sex, and when his request was denied, he opened fire at Geddes, killing her on the spot and then fled the scene. Suspicion soon turned on Nadine and her daughters, who were subsequently arrested. They reportedly confessed to the murder and implicated two other men, Brian Shelley and Rexon Knott. Shelley is accused of killing Geddes in the presence of her young daughter. He remains in custody after being remanded by the court when he appeared on February 8. Knott, who was also charged in connection with the killing, was freed by the court because there was not enough evidence to tie to the incident. After his release, Knott said that he was wrongly implicated in the killing. Former GLP counselor gets three years for gun charge. Former Jamaica Labour Party GLP counselor for the Ensom City Division in St. Catherine, Barrington Bailey, was on Thursday sentenced to three years in prison on a gun charge. Bailey had previously pleaded guilty to breaching the Firearms Act in gun court on October 26, 2020. Bailey, who is of a Gordon Penn address in St. Catherine, was arrested more than two years ago. The police reported that about 5.40 p.m., on February 10, 2019, Bailey was driving an Acura motor car along Old Arbor Road in the parish when he was signaled to stop at a police military checkpoint. The police said that the vehicle was subsequently searched and two handguns discovered. One of the weapons was reportedly unlicensed. Bailey, who served as counselor from 2012 to 2016, was subsequently arrested on suspicion of illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Following an investigation, the police submitted a file to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, which ruled that Bailey be formally charged. The matter was first mentioned in the St. Catherine Parish Court and subsequently transferred to the gun court, where he pleaded guilty last year. Jamaica to get COVID vaccines from India next week. Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, has announced that Jamaica will be receiving doses of a COVID-19 vaccine approved by the World Health Organization, WHO, from India next week. The minister shared this in a tweet earlier today. He said, I was overjoyed to not only receive this gift of pharmaceuticals, valued at $13.5 million from the High Commission of India, but also to receive confirmation that the WHO-approved vaccine will be arriving in Jamaica from India next week. The island is set to receive 50,000 doses. Commenting on the donation, I Commission of India, Rangsong Masukiwai, said this will go a long way. These are essential and critical medicines to treat COVID-related illness in Jamaica. This actually reflects the partnership that we have nurtured for decades together. I'm also happy to convey that the vaccine donated for Jamaica is coming and arriving sometime next week. And this will be another arrival that will boost further the relationship between the two countries. Jamaica and India has been good friends and we have helped each other and we look forward to deepening and widening this relationship in the coming days, he added. Jamaica records 204 COVID cases, three deaths. Jamaica yesterday recorded 204 new cases of COVID-19 and three new virus-related deaths, pushing the total number of confirmed cases to 22,471 and the confirmed death toll to 413. The country also reported one more death of a COVID patient as coincidental. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the latest deaths consist of a 54-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 63-year-old female from St. Catherine, and a 65-year-old male from St. Catherine. Meanwhile, the ministry said there are now 8,608 active cases of the virus in the country. Of the newly reported cases, there were 79 males and 125 females, with ages ranging from two days to 99 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, 69, St. Catherine, 63, Manchester, 17, St. James, 13, Portland, 11, St. Thomas, 8, St. Anne, 7, Clarendon, 5, Hanover, 4, St. Elizabeth, 4, Westmoreland, 2, and Trelawney, 1. The country also recorded 58 recoveries yesterday, bringing the total since the outbreak locally to 13,231. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.